Master Xeon here, and in this Hops Mini, I wanted to talk about Reverse Bevel. Reverse Bevel is best showcased by using something like Box Cutter. We'll turn on Snapping in order to just grab the center point, and before we do anything, we'll change it to a circle, and we'll just draw a circle, bring it in, but we'll shift it to Live. Because it applies the modifiers on circle in my case, I can actually go in, grab this top face, and by pressing Q and going in edit mode, we can control click in order to bevel it in a reverse direction. So normally, if we were to bevel, it would get go something like this. However, by reverse beveling or pressing in in edit mode, we can actually flip the direction of this particular bevel. And you can do some interesting things with this, for example, uh, we can also control click and add another bevel on top of it, actually controlling this area and control its contour just on the bevel modifier itself. We can also grab the bottom face and control click it and get a different type of bevel. However, because of its placement in the stack, it's being beveled twice, so we can hold shift and move it up the stack in order to get a cleaner route. And I've actually never seen a reverse bevel at the bottom of a cylinder. So let's actually tab back out and take a look at this. And this is actually a pretty interesting look. However, I wanna go back into edit mode and make adjustments to it by control clicking it. And we'll just actually flip that back around. So now if we go into hops tool by pressing alt W, by holding control, we can actually see the dots for controlling the bevel of the selection. So with the first one, we can control the inner bevel. The second one, we can control this lower one that we have kind of delegated to the bottom. And then we can control how it interacts with the shape itself. And this would come in handy where if we were to have a bevel on the shape like so, even though we lose a little bit of control, you can see the bevel got skewed due to basically lack of topological control. So we can actually rectify that by putting just a single loop cut in there. And now we can see that the shape is being held by having this loop in the middle be a guidance of short sorts for the purposes of this test. So if we hold control, we can begin moving our dots again and now actually begin to get a pretty interesting result. And this is uh, pretty much a benefit of having box cutter have such a small offset. It just allows us to really get these to merge ever so nicely whenever we get lucky in these situations. However, reverse bevel is still one of those things that's fairly new, which is why we haven't yet added it to box cutter. But I just wanted to let you know how you could quickly just get in there and just draw a shape. In fact, we'll do just one more to wrap it up. Switch over to box cutter and we'll switch to box and just draw a shape, select the top face and control click mark. And now we're controlling the bevel that's happening on the way in. So it's just another way to approach beveling. And then of course, if we wanted to really make this interesting, we can select this shape, select both of these edges, mark them, and then just control click bevel to add a new bevel, but we'll press L to change the limit method to weight. And we see that the bevel is almost where we want it. So if we just hold shift and scroll it up the stack once, we've changed the order. And by pressing one, we can actually set the profile to just 0.5 and actually just play with our modifier. In fact, if we scroll it up past the weld, we can actually clamp this thing absolutely and weld will just handle things for us, allowing us to get a more well-controlled bevel result here. And of, and of course, since this is live, we can still move things around. We can alt click sharpen to add a weight at normal and we're still good to go. So hopefully this quick tip is showing you how to quickly just get into hard ops and use um, box cutter and booleans in general to basically set up reverse bevels. I was debating on if I should do a behind the scenes of the making of the tutorials of since these are like single takes and probably won't even be that much work. So the first hops tip is about uh, doing a reverse bevel. So the easiest way to showcase it is to use box cutter and we could just grab a top face and we could either control click mark or we can control click bevel. Doesn't matter. And you can just put a bevel. Uh, also, we're able to say mark these and put a different type of bevel on top where we grab it by the limit method. And you see it's having issues at that point, but if we roll it up in the stack, we can actually get like a double, double bevel control happening where we can control the bevel three different ways. And then if we want to control it another way, we can control click it again, which will give us a kind of contour bevel that we can control. So now we have three different bevels in action. And the best way to showcase a multiple bevel control situation 
on just a cutter is with Hopstot. So we'll look at this in perspective. And if we move the first dot, we're controlling this. If we move the second dot, we're controlling this. And with the third dot, we're controlling this. And the way this works is basically by flipping the normal on the bevel of the first one, we're able to get an opposite result. But we're also able to put a bevel even on top of that by just beveling the main shape. Of course, we can't have it too big. But now we have a bevel on the main form that we can control to a limited extent. Of course, if we start causing overshoots, it's going to get problematic. But we also have this bevel that has three different levels of control for us to confirm whether we want this one, uh, make this one even bigger for the one that's cutting into the shape itself, and even for the transition between how it interacts with the mesh itself. So we could have something rounded on it or get something a little more flat shaded. So really that's the uh, tip in a nutshell.